Chapter 57, Juro. Juro was listening from the driver's seat. The sudden shift in Felix's mood was a bad sign. There was obviously something she had found out that she wasn't sharing with Ashton. Whatever it was, Juro hoped she would do the smart thing and let him know when she could, so that he could keep them both safe. He was going to take them back to his place for the night and then leave with them in the morning. He wasn't sure where he was going to take them, and he couldn't contact RLIP for suggestions. Juro wasn't exactly sure what Felix's case was in regard to, so he would need to sit down with her tonight and have her explain what was going on. Where are we going now? We're heading back to my place. Your place? Is that safe? For tonight, it will be. Tomorrow, I'm not so sure about. We'll probably head somewhere else tomorrow until RLIP can get everything squared away with your case. Can't you guys tell me something about what your case is about? I feel like I have a right to know. Felix made some subtle sound of disbelief behind Juro. <laughs> what? He glanced back at them for a moment. Nothing. Well? Can't you? We can't tell you anything you don't need to know about the case for your safety. Plus, I don't know anything about the case myself. <laughs> so, Felix, you will need to fill me in later. I'm getting too old for all of this. All right. How old are you? Jura was quiet for a moment. Me? Yes. <laughs> Why do you need to know? I'm just curious. Thirty. Juro led them up to the apartment and locked the door as soon as they got inside. Then he activated a complex alarm system that only he knew the code to. He was actually beginning to feel anxious about finding out what the case was about. Juro had no idea what he was dealing with, and he wouldn't know how to protect them properly until he did. You guys can rest for tonight. But first, Felix, I need to talk to you in private. Felix glanced at him and nodded. Ashton, stay here. We'll be back. Juro left Ashton and Hal in the living room and led Felix towards a door. It was his study, a very small room that felt more like a walk-in closet than an actual office. The desk took up almost half of the space, and there was a single light bulb hanging from the ceiling that Juro turned on as they walked inside. He quietly shut the door behind them and sat down at the desk, gesturing for Felix to sit across from him. She was very quiet and didn't say anything at first. Well? I don't want Ashton to hear any of this. He won't. How can you be sure? The room is soundproof. RLIP went through the apartment when they first hired me and made sure I had a secure place to work. How do you know if someone rings the doorbell or is in your apartment? Juro folded his hands and let out an impatient sigh. She just waited. I get notifications on my computer, Juro finally answered, nodding towards the computer on his desk. Now tell me the case. Even though they were in a soundproof room, she still spoke in almost a whisper. Juro furrowed his eyebrows as she explained the story of them trying to find the son of weapons designers that previously worked for the government, and how she had lived in Tossilville for a while. She also explained how they had found Stephen Flanagan, and then gave a brief explanation as to how she had gotten Ashton involved. Juro rolled his eyes at that point, but she appeared to ignore it and kept explaining. By the end of the story, Juro knew that he was going to have to work hard to make sure they were safe. It sounded like there was a whole group of enemies after them, and he knew that any communications of RLIP could risk them all getting found. You shouldn't have involved Ashton in this case. Look. She said, leaning forward. I don't need anyone telling me that I made a mistake. I already know that. I just had this weird idea that I wanted to live a life of my own as opposed to altering my future with RLIP's ridiculous guidelines. Was it against guidelines to go with this Ashton guy? Felix hesitated. Not exactly. 
but you knew it was wrong. Felix stayed silent for a long time. Then why did you continue talking to him when you knew you were putting him in danger? I don't know. For some reason, I just felt drawn to him. I felt like there was an important reason that I needed to keep talking to him. At first, I thought he could help me with the case because he knew Stephen Flanagan. But then everything moved so fast after that. I have a tip for you. If you want a life of your own, then being a part of the RLIP agency is not the right place to be. Felix leaned back and looked down at her hands. I've thought about quitting. Jero didn't acknowledge this, but instead moved on to the next question. What was with the sudden shift in your attitude after we got Ashton's passport? Felix wouldn't say anything. Felix, I have to know. I'm trying to keep you safe. It was nothing. Just... The stress of the situation finally caught up with me. Jero stared at her for a long time, not quite believing her. But she seemed fairly with it. She seemed like she would share something that was a matter of life or death. Is that everything? That's everything. <laughs>